Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another conversation at the Georgetown Tea House. Tonight, we are excited that you've joined us. We're excited to be here. It's another Monday night. You know, Monday comes so quickly. I can't even believe it sometimes, but we're happy that you're here. So I invite you to go ahead, like the broadcast, share the broadcast. And I always say, call a friend. Don't just share it to them, but call them up. Call a friend or two and let them know that we are live and they need to join you because you need company. All right. So stay tuned. We have a good one for you. When does pride become a vain thing? All right. When does pride become a vain thing? So we want you to weigh in. We want to hear from you as usual. So bring all your friends, bring your two cents and a dollar and let's talk. Examine any profound event in the Bible or in the history of Christianity. And one is sure to recognize the consistently pivotal role of conversational interactions. We see this at play in Genesis, the first book, where through a series of conversations we witness the fall of our species and the expulsion from the Garden of Eden. The conversation between God and man the conversation between man and woman. The conversation between the woman and the devil. And so on. At the Georgetown Tea House, we know the great importance and pivotal role that conversations often play in our lives on this earth. And thus, we will seek to engage in the types of conversations that are insightful, stimulating, and thought-provoking. And yes, occasionally a trifle boring. Our hope is that with each visit to the tea house, we can become better aware of who we are, of our relationship with God, and where we stand with each other and the rest of humankind. And yes, through it all, there will be music. For music it has been written is the food of love and God is love. Join us every Monday evening on Facebook and YouTube Live for conversations at the Georgetown Tea House, a gospel side of me production. Please do bring along a cup of tea or a glass of your favorite juice. Hello guys, we are back and we welcome you again to another Monday night. We're happy that you're here. And tonight, as usual, I'm not here alone. I have two of my friends with me. You know, I always have friends with me. And tonight is no exception. So I have my dear, dear friend and pastor, Pastor Sherwin White. Thank you for being here, Pastor White. Say hi to our friends, please. Hi, everyone. It is a joy being here at the Georgetown Tea House. It's yes. just my delight, and I trust that uh, we would have a beautiful sitting this evening. And then we have Tyron. You've seen him before here, and we welcome him back. Thank you, Tyron, for coming and gracing us again. Just talk to our friends a little. Thank you very much, um, Marcia, for the invitation to be back here. I did have a wonderful time the last time we were here. And I want to say good night to all our friends on Facebook and YouTube. And I do hope you have a very wonderful evening discussing a topic that I think is very interesting. And they have different varying perspective. And I think that we will allow the, the word of God to speak on the topic, speak for itself. So I'm looking forward to the discussion. As always, I'm always excited to be to be here. Looking forward to the discussion. Good to meet my my friend, Pastor, Pastor White, I haven't seen him in, in years. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I haven't seen him in years. And I've, I haven't heard him preach in years also. But I know yeah. he's a man of the word and man of God. So I'm looking forward to having a good time, Elder. Beautiful, beautiful. I just want to say hi to a few people that are online already and saying hello. Don't forget, guys, you remember, once you get into room, remember to put um, to say hello so that we know who is viewing. We want to shout you out. We want to know, welcome you. 
If you're here for the first time, we welcome you to the Georgetown Tea House. Here's a fun, fun cafe, and you're not going to be disappointed. So let's want to say hi to Jamina, Samson, and Petal, and Candy Love, and Adiola um, Ramlal. Hi, Adi. Good to see you. And my boy, Lindsey Vaughn. You know, these people are people who come and support the Georgetown Tea House, and we're happy that you are here. And tonight, we are talking about when does pride become Come a vain thing. When does pride become a vain thing? So, hey, Lacey, hey, Tomo girl. Yes, when does pride become a vain thing? But so, before we delve into things, I want to set the mood with uh, I'm inviting uh, my trio buddies um, to sing tonight with me. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're singing, but they're, they're my buddies. So, please sit back, relax, enjoy this um, selection of music from Beverly Walcott. Um, really, really great singer and a friend of and a family of mine. So sit back, relax, and don't forget to share. Go on, to share the YouTube link. If you're on YouTube, say hello. If you're on Facebook, say hello so that we can tell you, we can hit you up and say hello, say hi. Calling you 
Are you ready for Jesus to come? That's a big, 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 big question. And I encourage you to ponder those words actually, um, as we have our discourse tonight. We're gonna have a really, really nice conversation. Um, Pastor, thank you again for being here. It, it's, it's a real blessing to have you here. Yes, and so we wanna, we wanna jump right into um, the conversation. Um, what does the Bible say about pride? We want, we want to talk about that for, for, for a bit. We want to go in depth as to what the Bible says about pride. I'm going to start with you, Pastor. What is pride as defined by the Bible? Um... When I think about pride and the Bible, uh, the first thing that actually comes to mind is the act of self-exaltation as was manifested in the life of Lucifer and trying to usurp the throne of God. So that's what I think about first of all, him being you know what I mean, consumed with something that was more than he actually possessed what God gave to him. But then we know the Bible talks about pride actually preceding, you know, a fall. And we also see in scripture that pride is presented as opposite to humility so i think i can just um you know stop here and allow tyrone to chime in and then i can you know take a follow from you so i think of lucifer what he did and the fact that pride goes before a fall and we see it as the opposite of humility okay tyrone yeah, um, I, I would agree with what, with what um, Pastor said. In fact, those are a few points that I had. Um, had I been the first one to, to speak. Um, in addition to being the opposite of, of, of humility, um, I can also see a positive side to pride. Um, when pride is external, when, when, it, when, when it goes outside to somebody else and not focuses on self, in that way, pride can be seen as something positive in that you, 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 are, you give credit to somebody else other than yourself for the accomplishment and all the rest of it. And if we should go a little further, Lucifer wanted to take God's position. He wanted to be in control. So pride also, if I'm a negative perspective, in my opinion, it, it, it deals with somebody who is, who, who is haughty, somebody who is not willing to submit, to surrender, to humble, to let somebody else take the limelight. Okay. Um, but I have a question. Um, the Lucifer story, bo both of you talk about, the, uh, about Lucifer um, and, 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 the, and the whole pride. But are there any other stories in the Bible that 
that spoke about um, pride being uh, a negative thing then, that, that, that pride being a negative thing. Because, okay. Okay, okay. yes, okay. Yeah, because we, we, because we, we know of the story of Lucifer. And, mm -hmm. and whenever we talk about, um, I mean, pride coming before a fall and these things, we always talk about Lucifer um, as being the person who was puffed up and haughty and, mm -hmm. um, you know, rebelled against God, etc. But are there other stories that, um, that also spoke of, you know, th this pride, th this pride mm -hmm. that was negative? In, in, in Lucifer's case? There are many stories that speak about pride um, from, from a negative, negative standpoint, whether implicit or explicit. One that I, that, I, that I love to read is the one of Pharaoh. When Moses went to Pharaoh and said, the God of Hebrews met with us and told us to, let, to allow you to let the people go and serve him. The very first question um, Pharaoh asked Moses, who is this God that I, Pharaoh, should listen to him and to let you go? So from that point, and when we read a story, progression of that story there, Pharaoh's heart became very hard. And, and I believe that's the effects of pride. That's what pride is. He was not willing to be humble. Even when he saw the economy of Egypt went down, his men said to him, can't you see that Egypt is destroyed? But Pharaoh held on to his position. He will not let the people go. So that's a, that's a story where to me pride, even though it is not explicit in terms of, of expression, it is implicit in terms of behavior and attitude towards God. You know, if I can just add here, Tyrone, you spoke about um, Pharaoh. And I'm going to just look at someone else. There was a guy whose name was Absalom, right? Um, the king's son um, was handsome. There wasn't a, a, a guy in, in, in the whole of Israel that was as beautiful. The Bible actually describes this guy as being beautiful. So mm. it's not just being handsome. This man was beautiful. And... He had long hair. He would just cut his hair once uh, a year. And of course, it was very weighty. Now, the truth is that he was so caught up with his beauty, with his influence and everything, that he allowed it to go before him because he tried to manipulate the people. Then he tried, of course, just he, he tried something similar to Lucifer because he said that, listen, I may not be the son that is in line for the throne, but I am going to take it by force. And uh, one of the things that pride says to us is that we are entitled. Pride gives you a feeling of entitlement. And of course, we are going to speak a little, um, a little later as it relates to, you know, good pride and, exactly. and, and negative pride. That's what we're going to we're going to talk about mm -hmm. the, the way in which the words can be used interchangeably. But he had this feeling of entitlement, had the king running. And the sad reality is one of his symbols or sign of pride being his hair. I mean, that is what was responsible for his downfall because his hair got caught in the tree. And now he was hanging there, you know, in mid ear you know, not being able to actually help himself. But there is something that I needed to do a little more study on, but one commentator, and it was just about two months ago in our devotion, you know, in the morning, Don and I, we were dealing with the story as a warrior, as a warrior, Absalom would have been carrying a sword or a knife in his side, whatever it is. And yeah. he now hanging there. He was hanging. He was helpless. He could have taken his knife or his sword to do what? To cut his ear and to set himself free. But that symbol of his pride, he held on to it so much that he was not willing to cut that. You know, he was not willing to cut it, you know, so that he can be free. So pride isn't, isn't an easy thing at all. 
Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. 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 U
It fosters diligence and dedication. They said that it okay. nudges the mind. If, if I should come I guess, to, okay, all right, go ahead, um, Tyrone. When I look at the statement, pride comes before a fall, and I read the story of Nebuchadnezzar in Daniel, the writer um, said this, that Nebuchadnezzar's heart became hard because of pride. And I think that is where pride becomes real negative. When pride hardens your heart, against doing what God asks us to do or commands us to do. I think that is where it becomes really, really dangerous because he says pride hardens the heart. And that's why I said earlier, it's all about not letting go. And, and if, I should, if I should say something here, um, there's one reason I, I understand that why forgiveness, unforgiveness is a deadly sin. It is because God commands us and he's, he keeps pleading in us to keep forgiving, to forgive. But if we choose to hold on to something, not letting go, it is because of our pride that we choose not to forgive. And, and so that's what I'm saying. Pride is it dangerous when we choose to hold on to our position and not holding on to God's position. Yes, Pastor, but you 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 were speaks you were saying something before Tyron jumped in. Okay. Um, as I listen to what you read there, I see the positive aspect of what we call pride um, being, you know, mean positive as it were, um, because once we view pride as from the biblical perspective and we say pride or vanity, we see it as something that is quote unquote destructive in nature. We see it as yes. something that, you know, someone once said that pride is, is rooted in deep insecurity, right? That's what someone, in, in deep insecurity, fear and unworthiness, because you have this desire to flaunt yourself above others. So you have to showcase. And with that, you also you also find yourself in a position where you're going to dethrone others to make sure that you have the limelight. That's hmm. what it's all about. So sometimes because of how I may see myself that, listen, you know what? I am not as this person. So I, I, I want to make sure that I become what? Superior to this person now, it's it's a superiority something. So I am there and I'm gonna make a statement once I get there. That's what it is, the, the negative aspect of it because just look at, 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 at Lucifer, he saw himself as being disenfranchised. He saw himself as being second to. He was not contented with where he was. What he was doing now, he was looking somewhere else. So here, here now, I have first place, but I am seeing someone else. And because I'm seeing someone else, I am no longer contented with where I am. I want to move from where I am to go to where someone else is. And in that process, you're going to bring hurt to someone or yourself. With Jesus now, because Jesus had a position and he was willing to, to forsake it. And I guess the Apostle Paul brings it out clearly when he says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the what? Who, who was actually God and he thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Because right. for him, he did not want to elevate himself above, but he made himself of nothingness and took on the form of what a servant he came, humbled himself, he became a man. So with Christ, he gave up everything, he condescended. But Lucifer, on the other hand, he wanted to what? He wanted to ascend above the stars and the clouds and he's gonna be like the most high. Hmm. Um, um, go, go ahead, Tyron. <laughs> just, just one quick point, as pastor spoke there and he said Christ, 
um, give up everything. I just want to see Christ give up everything but lost nothing. Yes. And some of, us, some, of, some, some of us believe that once we give up stuff, we lose. Hmm. Christ hmm. didn't lose any bit of his power. He did not lose any bit of his status with God. Nothing. So, so, so again, humility and, and, and pride. Pride, you lose everything. But with humility, you lose nothing. And there's only much to gain. Okay. Um, just want to remind our friends, um, we thank you for joining the broadcast. You're you and you've entered into the Georgetown Tea House, and uh, here we have lots of good, good conversation, um, and we're looking forward to hearing from you as well. So I want to see you, you know, full in the chat with um, with your thoughts, with your questions. We want we want to just have a really good conversation here tonight. Um, thank you for joining. Um, don't forget to keep inviting your friends um, because they might have they might want to weigh in because we we're delving into. Um, you know the, the whole good, good, good pride, bad pride. Um, we want to get into it. We want to. We want you to be here. We want to invite your friends, um, and we'll be right back. Okay, we're back. Um, we're happy that you've, you're staying with us and we're looking forward to hearing from you in the chat. Um, how should a Christian express pride without seeming boastful and haughty? And guys in the chat, I want to hear from you too. I want to I wanna hear from you. I want to put your comments up. Um, add your dollar. I know you have a dollar to add, so add your dollar now. Yes, Pastor. How wow. should a Christian express pride without seeming boastful and haughty? Wow. Um, as it relates to not being boastful or haughty and how you should express pride, sometimes it has to do with those who are actually, you know, seeing you, those who are reading you, those who are interacting with you. Because I, I know of individuals that I may consider um, very cool and easygoing, you know, respectful people who are satisfied with their accomplishments or people who are grateful, you know, of their accomplishments. Whereas someone on the other end, they may actually see it differently. Mm -hmm. They may say, you know, that that person is you know, pride stricken, the person, you know, just likes to, you know what I mean, talk Show about, off. okay, 
yeah, we like show, to show off. off. Yeah. yeah, show off themselves or so on. So sometimes it has to do with the persons who are viewing and interacting with others. Having said that, whatever we do and our accomplishments that we have, we should never see it as, or see ourselves as the source of, that's what we should not do. Because mm -hmm. if, if, if you take pride and, you know, we say here, you take, I mean, great satisfaction in, 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 in being a professional, being yes. always early, you know, being someone who would not, you know, be just on the surface. You know, you take you take deep satisfaction in, in that. I mean, people may see it, you know, I mean, from a different light. But for you, you must know that whatever you are doing, it is not done to bring attention to yourself. That's the ultimate thing. Because it's not about you in what you are doing. It's all about it's all about God. So you are a singer, and you would want to make sure that when you're going to sing, you 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 go through your practice well, and and you care for your voice and and everything and so on. Someone else may may not do so, and because they're not doing so, they may say that hey, she she is a um, she's just a show off, you know. She's a whatever it is, you know. That's what they may say. Um, Tyrone, I, I recall Tyrone as a as a preacher, you know, at, oh, at, yes. at camp and so on. And just imagine if he is taking his time and you know he's doing his stuff, or if he's an educator and he wants to make sure that everything is done, you know, all the T's yes. are crossed, mm -hmm. you know, the I's are dotted. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You don't actually have to apologize to people for your proficiency. I mean, what God has blessed you with, and you, 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 you've come to point that, listen, you're not going to live a mediocre life. That's what you're not going to do. But you know, in it and what you are doing, it is not about self-glorification. That's what, I mean, that, that's the way I would, I would personally approach this. You know? And advice, and advice um, the, 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 the Christian um, church to, to behave. To yes, see because, because the thing is that, you cannot, you cannot live a substandard life, right? That's what you cannot do. And sometimes we think that because you are a Christian, a child of God, you should not have this level of quote unquote self pride and self accomplishment. You should not talk about what you have achieved. Now, if you have worked hard, you know, the, the, the quote that is well known, the heights that great men they have reached and kept it was not attained by sudden flight, but they, while their companions slept, they were up toiling throughout the night. So you imagine, you have worked hard. You have studied while others are playing. Sleeping. Yes. I mean, you, you are burning the midnight oil while others are up on social media, etc. And then when you are done, when you are done, and for your accomplishment, you throw a nice thanksgiving you invite people and you 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 have your celebration that is there, right? And someone may say that listen, you are a show off. That's what you are. A show off. No, you have worked hard. You are now reaping. Guess what happened? Whatsoever a man what soweth, that shall he also what reap. So you have to celebrate your harvest. That's one of the things that you would have to do because you have sown. You have watered, you have tended to the crop, and now it is time to, to celebrate. And you don't have to apologize to people for that. But with the same token, you are not saying that, listen, I am better than anyone. Okay. Tyrone, you want to jump in? Your, your mouth yes. itching. <laughs> yes. Um, Class has said quite a lot, and, and I agree with him here. But I just want to throw something in the mix here, Pastor. Yes. I will put it this way. Christian, most I'm saying most people is Christians. Christians need to know how to sell themselves. Okay. If you're applying for a job, you can't afford not to sell yourself properly. You can't fill out a resume and say, you know what? All of this accomplishment that I have, I don't need it. 
they're needed because you are applying for a job and you are, you, you are competing with thousands of others for the same job. And I believe God has given his people that kind of wisdom and intelligence to acquire knowledge, to become professionals, to use that professionalism that they have, the knowledge, to get the job. Because he made, he made you fit or qualified to get the job. Now, to say that you, because, of, because you, you will feel that something might say you, 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 you're proud, we as Christians, expect, we need to advertise what God has given to us. But in the process of advertising, advertise the source also. Okay, right. That, that's a that's a definite big that's a big point. Exactly. Really advertise big, the yeah. source. So you're advertising the source. I got my David said this in Psalm, I think it's 119. I am I'm paraphrasing, I'm smarter than my teachers because I study the law of God. <laughs> because I meditate, sorry, on the law of God. So David is saying, okay, yes, I'm smarter than these people. But what's the reason for that? It's because my source is not the lecture in the classroom. My source is God Almighty who gave me the ability to acquire knowledge at a certain level. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, when persons talk about education and Christianity, sometimes I get real upset. And I'll tell you why. If the God that we serve is all, all wise, why would he want to keep from us wisdom and education? When God sent Israel into Babylon, Daniel and the Fable boys got a, a scholarship. They got a scholarship from the Babylonian government to go and study the Babylonian language. A three-year scholarship, a full degree scholarship to the degree program. And when they were finished now, the Bible says they were wiser than the others. But guess what? They, 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 they put their, their wisdom not to any lecture in the Babylonian Empire, but they put their wisdom fully to God, the God of wisdom. So what I'm saying here is this. Yes, as Christians, be contented, be happy with our accomplishment. But don't forget the source who gave us the ability to get that accomplishment. And the other thing in terms of pride, what Christians should, should do, and, and I will put it this way, love yourself. That's crisis, that's crisis command to us, love self. Yes, love I, self. I'm definitely. Um, this says, there's some, something that I chronicled here that says um, healthy pride. They said healthy pride represents a positive notion of self-worth. Yes, right? exactly. and um, and that thing a lot. Oftentimes, we, you know, you know, to, to think that 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 you're puffed up because you you you're proud about yourself, mm -hmm. right? Um, it went on to say it's based, and it's based on the history, where personal efforts and endeavor of energy led to success. Yeah, right. And yeah. and and you talk you 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 talked about it um briefly just now. Yeah. Right. Um, self worth. I mean, yeah. um, you have to be proud of yourself, right? There's a text in the Bible that I love. God said to the Israelites, "I have given you the power to get wealth." The, the the persons who do not know God, they use that same text to acquire a lot of stuff, but they do not give God the, the, the source of it. Um, there, there are a few points I wanted to make on this issue of pride. Yeah. So when, when the Christian should never use what God has given to them to make others feel less of themselves. Mm -hmm. hmm. Okay. The, so moment, the moment you want to do it to make others feel less of themselves, then that, that's an issue. On the flip side of that, we cannot be held responsible hmm. for somebody who has like an inferiority complex. Mm -hmm. And who choose to feel less of themselves? In fact, I, I, and um, one would argue that Paul said, "If you know this person has this complex, and you still do it, then you should not be doing it as a Christian." So it has to do. And, and my final point on this here is this: what I observe from studying the Bible, 
the closer you get to God, the more revelations you get from God, the easier it becomes to be proud. Hmm. Lucifer, the, Lucifer, the typical example, he was the closest of the angels to God. He knows God more than anybody else. But guess what? That knowledge that he had of God, he did not humble himself. And Paul makes it clear. Paul says, less of all the revelations that I've gotten, less I become exalted. Keep and me consistent. Yes. humble. Yes. Keep me humble. Hmm. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Um, so we so we're saying we, we have to um we encourage our brethren to to be humble. So it, it's okay to to attain um the highest of heights, but but in it we need to remember the source and to be humble. Right. Correct. Um parents, we know we know we have our children um who succeed um in, in different disciplines, whether, it, whether it's music or sports or academics, um, how should we express? Can, you know, you know, we as parents, we, we, we sat down with them at nights and we helped them through the homework and we took them to the soccer practice and we took them to basketball practice and these things. Um, and, and we're happy and we're proud. Uh, how, how should we express their achievement, you know? I'll allow Tyro, Tyrone to go and then I'm going to weigh in. Celebrate. One word, celebrate. Whether it's a, as pastors um, suggested, whether it's a Thanksgiving service or uh, uh, um, reward them with some gift or something, celebrate God's goodness to them. But I'm, I'm admitting in your celebration, Keep at the center of your celebration the source. That's it. The source must be at the center of your celebration. Right. So um, she says, break up your children in, hu in humility. You know. Because, because oh. if, 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 if you don't follow Christ, Christ says this. I can do nothing of myself. Absolutely nothing. Mm. Everything that I do is of my father. I do nothing of myself. And I remember when 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 the the when the demons try to try to exalt Christ. I know who you are. Christ, Christ just told them to shut up. I'm not going to take any exaltation from you. And that's another that's another lesson we can learn. Be careful who we take these exaltation or these kind of um, congratulations from. Hmm. Oh wow. You know, one of the things that we have to keep in mind as we think about celebrating the achievements of, let us say, our children or our loved ones, from that tender age, you have to instill in that child that who you are, it is because of God. Remember, the end result, it is a part of the journey. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. So it's a part of the journey. So as you are going by, they know that it is God who is what taking them along that journey. You are not better. And it is something that I heard, um, you know, Joe Biden. I heard him saying, and, you know, I, I looked at my life and I said, that is something that my mother, she instilled in me. You know, he said that his mother would say, listen, Joe, you are no less than anyone. You're no less than anyone. But at the same time, you, know you are not, quote unquote, superior to anyone. Hmm. So you have yourself back. So you are not to, to, to wallow in the mud. You're not to cower saying that this person is superior to me. This person is better than I am. But at the set time, though no one is better than you, uh, you have to get to the point where you're not saying that, listen, I am better than him, I am better than her. You have been gifted, you are unique, you celebrate that, celebrate what God has given to you. And as I have said it before, if in your journey you stumble, you fell, 
you receive bruises and everything. When you have meet the finish line, you can raise your hands, you can jump, you can celebrate. That is what you can do. Yep. And but then, um, yes, but Pastor. Um, in order, let's take athletics, for instance. When yes. um, when I got second, I was mad as ever, right? Uh -huh. Mad as ever, um, and not because. I think that I was better than somebody else, but I think I can do better, right? And so mm -hmm. I wanted to get first. I wanted to be first. Um, is that a is that a negative thing? Uh, me wanting to be first. Me wanting to to meet to to um, attain my my best place. My, my, my best, you know. Um, second is not my best. I I believe I can push myself and I can get a, a nine point whatever, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I'm huh. going to work hard for it as well, you know, uh, and I'm going to yeah. say, that, you know, you, you, I mean, I'm better than you in this particular discipline. There was a Bajan runner, sprinter. I think it's Umadeli oh. Thompson was his name. Mm -hmm. I think he got a third place, I believe, at the Olympics, if I'm not incorrect. But I know that he did not get a goal. But when he returned home, the prime minister said that, listen, you have received a goal for us. Whatever that position is, to us, it is a goal. You have to, one, be satisfied with where you are. Being satisfied with where you are, you are, however, striving day by day for, for a greater position. As you strive, it should not be to quote unquote hurt, injure, or to displace. That's, that's not what it is. Because as you look at some shows and so on, you may see um, children and others, you know, um, let us say, uh, okay, let me give you a, a case in point. In figure skating, there was this girl, Nancy Carrigan, that's a number of years back, and there was Tonya Harding, I think, and there was this whole conspiracy. Yes, I remember where, that thing. Yes, yes where, where, where Nancy Carrigan got stabbed up somebody too. and so yes. on. You understand? You are not, you are not doing those things. So it, it should never get to that point. So it's like your children should know that it is not about hurting someone. It's not about displacing someone. You are doing your best. And if you have done your best, and your best, you have received a silver or you have received a bronze or you have not even made it to podium, you can actually still celebrate that because you have given your all. That's what you have done. So you have to, you have to direct the minds of your children, the minds of those that you have um, you know, been placed to supervise that it is not necessarily the position but it's where you have done your best. And once you have done your best, and with God, you can just celebrate that. Because for me, when I had a Thanksgiving service for, let us say, my success in CXC, listen, I did not top my school. And there are so many who have done what? Better than I did. But guess what happened? I am satisfied with where I am. Right. I, I'm proud I of you. Success. Yes. 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 All right, so hold your thoughts. Um, keep um, tuned in, guys, and we'll take a special item of music from another one of my friends, um, this time Regna, one of my trio buddies. So I'm featuring my trio buddies tonight. I'm pr I am proud of them. I'm very proud of them. Um, I'm proud of our ministries, um, of our various ministries and the one we had together. So sit back, relax, and um, listen to Regna. My name is Regna Ainsworth Robley, and I will be doing a simple song about grace. Um, and I am hoping that the words of this song will be the prayer that each person will offer up as you hear the words of the song. It doesn't matter who you are, where you've been, what you've done, God's grace is sufficient. I needed your grace more 
than I thought I ever would. You forgave more than I thought you ever could. I was stronger in my head, but truth is, I need your grace. I needed your grace more than I thought I ever would. You forgave more than I thought you ever truth is I need your grace I need your grace I need your grace I need your grace Then the naked without your grace be lost without I am proud. <laughs> Whenever these young ladies sing, I I'm happy. I'm I'm happy. Pastor, Pastor, why do you remember the, those days? Right, those good good old days. With yes, the trial, yeah. you you listen to the trial. Yes, yes. Back yes, in the day, yes. Tyrone, Back you remember the trial? Yeah, I haven't heard those two voices in years. Beverly and um, Regna. Yes, mm, yes, beautiful. yes, yes. Those, those are my girls, and I'm proud of them. Um. So, 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 we, so we know that proud, um, being proud is, a, is, is also a very good thing. But before we, um, I want to ask a hard question. Is it a boast for us to tell others that our God is the one true God, superior to all others? Well, okay, Tyrone, go ahead. <laughs> I will pass in the bottom. that any day. 24 hours a day. Paul says, I rather glory in the cross. That's the only thing I can boast about. There's, what else what, what there is for me to boast about? I can't boast of good works that I've done because there's none. I don't have any. I can't boast about my good deeds. I don't have any. All that's left for me to boast about is God and his grace. But I'm mindful not to get on the side of arrogance. Because the gospel, the way, the way we present the gospel sometimes can be a turn off for some people. When we present it in arrogance, Paul says, teach the truth in humility. So I will boast about God any day, every day, all day. Passed away. Yes. Um, my mind goes to the story of Elijah on Mount Carmel. Behal was the God that the people were now worshiping. And there were 450 prophets of Baal, 400 prophets of the grove. And Elijah was saying that, let it be known 
which God is God. Let it be known which God is God. The end of the story, God rained down fire and he manifested himself. That's what he did. We have to say to people that the God that we are serving, he is the great God, the creator. He is the one in whom we live and move and have our being. This is what must be stated categorically. And your boast, your boast, the apostle Paul says that if I am to boast, I should boast in what? I should boast in Christ because he is the one that's what exalted. He is the one that is lifted up. For me, I know I presented a message once and uh, someone said, hey, you really boasted about your church. I said, I said, well, I said, if that's the way you put it, because now I'm convinced beyond the shadow of a doubt that the Seventh-day Adventist church is not a church that just came about. This is God's church of last day's prophecy. And God has utilized this church to do so many great and mighty things. I mean, when I talk about our, our media ministry, our health ministry, our education ministry, I mean, you think about, you know, the number of countries that we are in and what we are doing, etc. cetera. It, it, it brings what a satisfaction that we are fulfilling a mission, a mandate that God has what that God has given to us, right? But with the same token, we are not saying that we are better than what than anyone else because for the israelites remember what god said that he did not choose you because because they were um um larger in numbers or anything he said it is all because of what god's what god's love and god's favor so at the end of the day you have to what celebrate god in your celebration so god must be the center of it Okay, Tyrone, you want it? Yeah, if I may give, the reason why mm -hmm. I said that I would boast of God any day, all day, every day, the scientists boast of their knowledge. The intellectuals boast of the, the intellectual ability. The sportsman boast of his strength and his ability. So why can't I boast, or why shouldn't I boast about the one true God? The other religions boast about their gods, those who don't have a God boast about they don't have a God. Those who don't believe in God boast and say, they, I don't believe in God. Those who have the universe as a God, they boast and say the universe is their God. So mm -hmm. I can boast but, about my God too. I like what you said though, um, that, that while, while I boast um, and I tell the truth about um, how I see my God, um, that we have to be careful with how we put things over um, because oftentimes when we boast about our God and, um, and the one and, and him being the one true God, we are still looking to witness and to tell the other people who we, um, we know or, or, or assume that, um, that don't have the one true God. You want to minister to them. You want to, we want to witness to them. So we have to still be able to like, like, Tyron was saying in humility, you, you, the, the, um, you said humil hum humility, humility in how we in how we say it or in how we approach them, how how we make them feel, you know, in in in, in making our declaration. In other words, yes, you know. So Marcel, you know, um, I shared the story once. Um, I was you know transiting in Barbados, and you know I was you know reasonably dressed and a uh, young lady asked me you know you know of my profession whether i was a lawyer a doctor a businessman etc and then i said no that i was a pastor and i said a seventh day adventist pastor so she said seventh day adventist i said yes and i took that moment right she said well i don't know about the seventh day adventist oh wow. yes I just started to say to her all of the good things and the great things 
about, you know, Adventism, about Seventh-day Adventism. Now, listen, she was like, okay, if you're going to say all of these things, I need to, you know, type Google to see if whatever it is there. It, I mean, she authenticate what I am saying. So wow. she started now to what to view that I don't know what has become of her or whatever it is, but it was used as a moment of introduction while it was a moment of quote unquote digging up at the same time. So whatever we do is that we have to present God, not as one that is, you know, out of the reach of others, because sometimes people who are gifted, those who are talented, when you showcase what you have, it is done at such or in such a realm that, listen, I am here and you are there and you cannot attain this. But as we boast about our God, he should be presented as someone that can be reached by all. Yes. Okay. Um, I heard a story. Um, you know how, um, you know, somebody's asked to do a particular, um, maybe MC, um, preach or you know, um, carry, do whatever. They're invited to do um, a feature, main feature, and then somebody introduces them and they they tell you all that the person has done and, you know, um, has behind their names and the kind of thing. Um, and then somebody said to me today that a particular um, colleague of theirs, whenever they had to introduce her, she would actually write what she wanted them to say, and they dare not. I say they dare not leave out any line. Right? What are your views on first um, talking about all, all the different things that, that come before or after, and um, somebody who writes their own thing, right, write to you and say, you have to say this, Sherman, if you're going to say anything about me, say that I'm a great singer. I'm um, I'm a woman of God, but whatever, I'm just saying. Well, the truth is that I don't know if I am in the position to make a judgment call. If someone wants to, you know, have everything of their bio being read, I, I can't say that the person is haughty or the person is prideful. What I know, however, I, and, um, I guess um, Pastor Silton Brown would not be annoyed with me or so, and I'm speaking positively here. You know, we were in a meeting and someone said, you know, Dr. Silton Brown, and he said, um, just be mindful that I'm not Dr. Brown. So I have not, I have not matriculated along that line. And he said, less those who have worked hard and labored for what they have, right feel offended just know that i am not a you know phd or a demon or whatever it is so there are some individuals who would want you know to do so and then sometimes what happens too is that where you are and where you are presenting it may be very important for individuals to have you know a background of the person's qualifications whereas yes someone could say it's just an ordinary person and the person can go and the person can do a great job as someone who is phd or 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 ma or so on but for me i would not i would not make a judgment call on that individuals are different um for me if you say i'm um, pastor sherwin a.e white and that's it if you choose to uh, put the letters that are there. Fair enough. Sometimes it is important that the letters be there nonetheless. And if you have worked for it, you have worked for it. Give the person, give the person their due. That's what you you should do. Yeah. Yes, Tyrone. I think as as um as far as that, I think it's a very subjective um issue where it depends on the individual. Some some people will tell you that there are individuals in the church who will not listen unless they know that you have a pedigree behind your name. Unless they hear that stuff behind your name, they're not inclined to listen. There are other individuals who would say, you know what? Just say, I am brother 
and Brother T, and that's it. Finish with that. And let the presentation speak for itself. Let the presentation speak for itself. And I can understand that position because some people might think that position says, okay, I'll remain humble and let God do the exalt, God do the exalting. But the person who wants for the, the names to be, the, the, the title to be behind it, that's that that's okay with them. That's that's their point. That's between them and their God. I cannot read somebody's heart, I cannot read somebody's motive. God has not given me that ability as yet. And I don't think he will ever give me that ability to read into somebody's inner motive as to why they do certain things. He alone can, can deal with that. So I, I would say, as Pastor, um, Pastor White said, I would not make um, a judgment. I don't make a judgment on it. But if you ask what I prefer, I prefer to leave the titles out. I prefer to just leave all the titles, just leave the titles out. Because in my perspective, from my personal perspective, sometimes the titles can take away from the central focus of the message. Sometimes titles take away from the central focus of the message. And, and, and as one friend of mine said, titles sometimes puts a gap between the presenter and the listener but if you remove a title it brings them like on, on on the same level from a brotherly perspective on the same level and i remember pastor mingo preached a sermon once and he asked the question why is it that that the table that christ sat around was a circular table because nobody could have recognized immediately that christ was the head of the table mm. wow so it was basically a circular table and the community of circular tables, so nobody could have recognized him. Pastor, you, know, you want to say something? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I, I, I want to chime in here. You know, someone may say that, listen, the culture back then was, you know, the fact that they had circular tables that they were using. That's what someone may say. Mm -hmm. Now, um, let me just let me just go a little forward into this. Why? It is not important. It's it's not good for us to make a judgment call with that. I don't know people's motives. Sometimes I can just say, oh, don't call me whatever it is. Remember the story that I started with as it relates to Absalom? Yeah. If you read the story, every day Absalom would actually stand at the gate. And Absalom would say, you know what, only if, you know, you had someone to represent you before the king, you know, the people would come, you know, to, to, to bow down. He said, no, 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 no. Don't, don't, don't bow, don't bow, don't bow. We, we are brothers, we are brothers. You know, just stand up. That's what Absalom is going to say, you know. But guess what happened? He had what? Hidden motives and hidden agendas. So I don't know why someone would say, oh, you know what? Just forget about the title. Just call me Sherwin. And someone says, you know, I'm want to call feigned humility, feigned humility, feigned humility, feigned um, humility, humility. Yeah. So I just don't know. I don't know. So if someone prefers that their entire bio be read out, bear with me. If not, if someone chooses something even else. If even if it's five minutes, even if it's five minutes before the sermon, a whole five minutes. Just um, saying. You see, I honestly, I honestly cannot. And I, I, I think that it may not be fear. For me, I would make sure that I have the necessary things that are there. Because, you know, even, even you know, folk may say, hey, we need a preacher to come by. And they're going to check to see who this person is, you know where the person has been to. You know, you, you're looking for a reputable person. That's what you're doing. And it's fair enough for people to do their research and so on. And I believe, you know, some, you know, some folk are climbing the ladder while others are, you know, to, to the top of the ladder. But he who is to the top would not look down upon the other person. So for me, I don't, I don't, have, a, I don't have a challenge, honestly speaking. 
Okay. I just want to read something here. Um, it says pride becomes a vain thing when I'm going to read to just two points. When we refuse to con when we refuse to when it, we refuse to contribute to the joy and comfort of others, it becomes a vain thing when we refuse to contribute when it be, refuse to contribute joy and comfort to others. It yes. becomes a vain thing. And we compare our when we compare our children, our positions, status symbol, and possessions with those of others becomes a vain thing. Because oftentimes, like you know, um, we are proud that our children are succeeding, but then we compare them to mm, this person. Um, we we're happy that we studied and we got a good job. But then we look down, we turn our noses on somebody whose job is not as um, prestigious as, as, as another. Vain thing, right? We got more possessions than somebody else, right? And, um, and, we, and, and we just be, be boastful about it. Um, vain thing. You know, um, for me, one of the things that I strive to do is this. No matter how far I have reached or I have attained, I make sure that I'm not out of the reach of people. Yes. That's what it is. That's important. I'm not out of the reach of people. And this, of course, it isn't um, limited to a particular class. Mm -hmm. You know, people with certain, you know, um, degrees or whatever it is, you, you should be reached by all. Mm -hmm. Of course, um, as I've said earlier, people's view of, of, of who you are, it's based on, you know, different, different experiences. That's what can happen. Because if, Tyrone, you are there and uh, you're conducting the interview and someone comes and they, you know, have a mediocre presentation and you may have to comment on it or... And, and, the comment may be forceful. That person may then say that, listen, who he thinks, you know, he is. He, he is. is mm -hmm. or, or whatever it is. So that may just be the viewpoint of someone else. Now, someone else may say that, hey, he's a very thorough person. You know, he's a professional. You yeah. know, and sometimes because you do not, um, you know, um, I should say what, it's not about condescending where you choose not to, to, to lower certain standards, et cetera, people may have a challenge with that at times. Um, and the, the thing is, I'm in a profession that it is very easy to compare. As an, as an educator, you're in a class with 37 students and you give a test, you give an exam. The temptation is great to compare students however i've learned that the better thing to do is to compare the child with the child himself okay that's because my rationale for doing that is simple if i know that your academic ability is within the range of 85 to 95 and for some reason your performance is 80. Mm -hmm. Even though that's at the top of the class, something went wrong somewhere along the line. You did not perform to your standard. It may be above the standard of the others, but to your standards, you have not performed. And it therefore means that something needs to be done to get you back where you belong. And I saw somebody post it earlier in the chat. We should only compare ourselves with God. Mm -hmm. Compare ourselves with the standard set by Christ. Mm -hmm. Because he is our standard. He's our standard of love. What it means to love. He's our standard by which we define what sin is. He's the standard by which we define what relationship should be and what we should we, we should value. So comparison among ourselves, to me, it, it lends itself to 
a lot of pride and, and trying to make others feel. In relation to what Pastor said in terms of critiquing, mm -hmm. as a teacher, yeah. I have to do that every single day. Mm -hmm. Because when you give students work to do, the work must be corrected. And one of the things that it teach you in, in, in education is that you correct to improve. Mm -hmm. You don't, correct, mm -hmm. right. you don't mm -hmm. correct to make somebody feel smaller. Yes. You correct to improve. And if I'm to generalize that concept, the question I would ask myself is, why am I studying this particular field? What's the purpose? of studying that particular field. Who I'm going to help. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So when, when, mm -hmm. when, when I was doing a particular program, midway into the program, my mental, my mindset changed. And when I mindset changed, when I studied the book of Numbers, and God made a mm -hmm. simple statement in Numbers, you shall be paid for the service that you give. Mm -hmm. And so whatever is being done whatever studies is being done it is done with the mindset of providing a better quality service to those i'm dealing with so that they can improve their life and i was speaking to some young guys who they call them low performers and i asked them one simple question what's your purpose in life and i said to them if you're going to do anything whatever job you choose if the service you render hmm. is detrimental to somebody's life, then change. Whatever service you render, it must be a service that will improve the quality of somebody's life. You teach, you improve the quality of a children's life. Mm -hmm. You're a police officer, you improve the quality of a citizen's life. You're a preacher. You preach sermons that improve the quality because the God I serve yes, is all yes, about improving the quality mm -hmm. of yes. somebody's life. Yes, yes. In everything that we do. Yes, yes. All right. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Okay, we we'll are back. Um, Pastor Tyron has said a mouthful. Um, you had anything you wanted to add there before we uh, before we wrap things up? No, 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 no. That's okay. That, that's that's fair enough. Okay. All right. So, um, based on all that have, um, we've learned, we, um, that was discussed tonight, um, Pastor, what when does pride? Let's wrap it up for us. When does I'm going to ask you, and we're going to ask Tyron, we, and we, we're closing off on this. We open with the question, when does pride become a vain thing? So just wrap it up for us in your words. Okay, so um, as I view at pride, I see pride can be a general sense of satisfaction as it relates to one's accomplishment and you know, celebrating with others based on what they have achieved also. Um, where you see yourself basically as a reflector of gifts that God has given. That's what it is. So God has blessed you. And by extension, you are shining, you're blessing others. Once you get to that point where you become the the, the, the the center of attention yes yes we are everything you become the source of and there is this superiority you know i mean um complex that is there and 
where you have to hurt and injure others in order to attain, you know, and, and sometimes we do these things where we malign others, where we talk about others so that we can, you know, we can get a position. You know, I heard, you know, someone said that, listen, I applied for a job and someone else applied for the job. The two of us, we applied for the job. And then, you know, that person was asked, who do you believe would be the best person to actually get that position? Of course, you would say the job comes with lots of perks. The job mm. comes with, you know what I mean, travel and, yep. and scholarship for my children and everything and so on. But that individual said, you know what? As I look at myself and this person, that individual would be the better person, even though I wish that I would get the position. So it is where you, you, you no longer see yourself as the paragon of virtue. It is all about me and where God takes backstage. So you must get to that point where Christ remains the center. And whatever you're doing, it should not contribute hurt or, or, or any injury to anyone. And you should not dehumanize people in the process. Yes, Tyrone. Yeah, I, I like the word dehumanize, Pastor, because I, I think um, as Christians, you must be prepared to hurt the devil's kingdom. Or you must be prepared to put a dent in his kingdom. Um, the way I see pride and what I've observed and listened and what I've gathered in, in, in general this evening is that Anything that we have, it can be, it can become a pride. We can, it, it can, it can ascend to the, the level of pride. The power that comes in position, the knowledge that we have, mm -hmm. the revelations from God that we have, or that God has given to us, mm -hmm. our possessions, they all can be used as tools to, 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 to feed that desire to be superior. Hmm. And our enemy is a very smart guy. He continues to allow us to feed that desire. Yes. And, and, I, and I like you said superior, that word superior, because yes. oftentimes we, exp we know um, of instances where people say to me, um, you guys make me feel inferior you guys make me feel and they use that word too you guys make me feel inferior you know you guys make me feel as if i'm not serving um you know a god of creation or you know so we have and to be careful as you said that marcel I, and, and i'll try to strike a balance here in that some persons will look at the way you live your life and in and of themselves they're offended mm by the way you live you can live your life for christ very humble whatever it is but the other person person on the outside now can perceive you to be this haughty person but you're living your life for christ you are as humble if they come and they speak with you mm -hmm. they're as humble as they can get you get you, you you talk with them and so on mm -hmm. and so we have to strike the balance sometimes it is people's perception i it it, it is true um oh and she thinks yes you think, yes, yes. He and think he's the best preacher. Yes, he think he's the best preacher. But in their own, because they're saying to themselves, hmm, he's a good preacher, mm -hmm. right? And, and and so they're putting that on you. Yeah. You know? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And, and, and I, I recognize that, again, from, from studying Christ and the Pharisees. Hmm. Because, because Christ's lifestyle highlighted their faults, they, 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 they treated him in a certain way. So the lifestyle that, we, that, that Christians live is also a way of, I don't want to say highlighting, but making other people feel differently. That on, back on the issue of pride here, as, as my closing arc, my closing point is, is, is very simple. The wicked in his pride put God's or thoughts of God out of their mind. In other words, God is completely out of the picture. And once we take God out of the picture, Lucifer takes control. 
Mm-hmm. The Lucifer spirit takes control. Mm-hmm. And okay. so for me, pride is a mindset. It's an attitude. And for that attitude to be positive, it has to be centered in God. Excellent. Um, it says, um, I'm, Pastor, what are you going to wrap up after I re- just read this? Yes. Um, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you, this, um, this reading says. It's a notion we dish out and long to hear daily. But when is it sin? The Bible is clear that it's okay to encourage and admonish each other to take pride in the good works of God and his creation. We can be proud of our proud to be children of God, but we cross into sin when it revolves around us. Yes. You know, thank you so much for sharing there. And you know, someone posited that one, as we look at our lives, if we are very oversensitive, it may be that we have, you know, some degree of pride that is there, Mm -hmm. that's negative. If there is bitterness and you find it very difficult to forgive, and Tyrone, you mentioned a little while ago the unforgiving spirit, it may be just because there is some level of pride. If you have a problem listening to others because you think that you know everything, Hmm. it may just be pride. Mm-hmm. If you are unteachable, mm-hmm. if you cannot take correction, rebuke, or criticism, and you are always defensive and you justify everything, it could be because there is pride. And finally, if you always have a negative perspective to someone else, of it could be because there is pride. I thank you. Oh my goodness. Um, thank you so much, gentlemen. Thank you guys in the chat. Thank you guys tuning in um, from YouTube and from Facebook on the Gospel Side of Me page and from my personal page. We thank you for being here week after week. And we have new people every Monday here um, just chilling with us. And we thank you for your contributions. And we look forward to seeing you. You can still, um, after the broadcast, you can still go ahead and share it with your friends. All right. Um, we love you. We look forward to seeing you again next Monday at 7.30 sharp. So good night, everyone. And we love you all. Examine any profound event in the Bible or in the history of Christianity. And one is sure to recognize the consistently pivotal role of conversational interactions. We see this at play in Genesis, the first book, where through a series of conversations we witness the fall of our species and the expulsion from the Garden of Eden. The conversation between God and man The conversation between man and woman. The conversation between the woman and the devil. And so on. At the Georgetown Tea House, we know the great importance and pivotal role that conversations often play in our lives on this earth. And thus, we will seek to engage in the types of conversations that are insightful, stimulating, and thought-provoking. And yes, Occasionally, a trifle.